Hope Service Tech for Carl's Stores. I deal with anything repair or service related. And we're here today to introduce the new video ureteroscopes. All right, so you guys have about five flexible ureteroscopes, the ones that have the black body with the eyepiece that you look through, all right? This one's replacing that. This is the video version of that, which means that all you need to do is plug in this chip right here. It powers on, it has a built-in light source, so you don't have a lot of light posts. Um, and the other difference, since it's a video and it's not a flexible scope, means it's a lot more expensive. So if we were to transactionally repair your old, your old fiber scopes, those are about $6,500 a piece. If one of these breaks and you had to replace it, it's about $10,000. So very expensive piece of, piece of equipment. All right. So we also have these new metal containers uh, that you're going to be using for all the storage flexible scopes eventually. So you have six of these on site, and the first thing I want to talk about in terms of these containers is just making sure that when it comes down from the OR, and you're in decontam, that you make sure that the OR staff put it in here properly, and when you guys prepare for sterilization, that it's in here properly as well. Um, so most importantly, we want to make sure that the most um, delicate part of the scope, the shaft here, are in these blue inserts, all right? Nelson's gonna provide a picture of how to uh, load it properly in here, but that's how we want the shaft in the inserts, all right? If it's you know hanging out of here, it'll get stuck in these holes, cause damage during transport, it'll be moving around, all right? So that's most important. These are the ones are trying to get it walled down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, in terms of cleaning, it's literally the same exact process as you're used to with the ureteroscopes, the fiberscopes. So I'll just go over that briefly for you guys. First thing that you're going to want to do as soon as you receive it down decontam is the leak test. First, the dry leak test. All right. So we want to make sure that our vent port right here is dry and it's free of any debris. We're going to take our leak tester, push in and rotate clockwise so it locks on. We're going to pressurize it up to 200, which is the end of the blue section here on the dial. All right. You go over a little bit, it's okay, you're not gonna blow the scope. Once you pressurize it to 200, you're gonna start deflecting the scope five times both ways. You can see the angle cover right here. And what we're doing there is just dispersing the air throughout the entire scope so we can get an accurate read on our leak test, all right? So once we've done that, we're gonna push our release button right here and drop it down to 160, all right? Again, a little over, a little under time. This is where we're gonna do our reading. So at that point, if it maintains its pressure and that needle doesn't move, then it passes the leak test, and we can move on to the wet leak test. The reason that we do both a dry and a wet leak test is because the small pinhole leaks that occur here may not be picked up on a dry leak test, but the wet leak test will pick up on it, all right? So for our wet leak test, we're gonna leave this pressurized where we have it, and we're gonna take the scope and place it in um, water, and we don't want the water to pass this right here, when this is plugged in, there's a port in here that's open, and if we submerge it in water, water can get in there and affect the internal working of the scope, all right? Cause a bad image upstairs or no image at all, all right? So when it's in the water, you wanna take um, your automated pump system, suction 10 mLs of water through one channel, and flush it back down the other channel so that we can ensure there's water throughout the entire working channel, all right? Once we've done that, we're just gonna check the shaft of the scope, which is where the majority, all your leaks occur, all right? And what we're looking for is bubbles either rising to the surface of the water or occurring on the actual shaft itself, all right? So once, you're, once you've uh, looked at that for 30 seconds, you don't see any um, bubbles coming up, then it passes our wet leak test and we can move on to cleaning, all right? So we can take it out of the water, hold our release button right here to depressurize it all the way to zero, push in and rotate counterclockwise, it'll come off, all right? So now I'll go through the step-by-step -step of the manual cleaning. We're gonna prepare our enzymatic cleaning solution, properly dilute it for the manufacturer's recommendation, and we're gonna fully submerge the scope, all right? First step we're gonna do is take a soft lint-free cloth or gauze and wipe down the cable here, all right? It's okay to get this chip wet. You wanna wipe it, you wanna completely wipe it down, all right? Next thing we're gonna do is hook it up to your automated pump, and we're gonna suction out of the working channel 100 mLs of cleaning solution, we don't want to flush it back through. We want to get rid of that solution that we've suctioned in a separate sink or basin, all right? That's contaminated. We don't want to add it back in. We're then going to switch over to the irrigation channel and do the same thing, suction 100 mLs of that cleaning solution, all right? 
Once we've done that, we're going to take a soft lint free cloth and now we're going to wipe the actual scope itself. So this handle, the silver section, all the way down to the distal end. Now when you're working on the angle cover right here, this is made of a different material so that it's able to bend, all right? Whereas this part of the shaft is made of a harder material. You want to be careful when you're wiping this down, you don't want to yank on it too much. That different material can be stretched out, cause some overlapping right there, and they'll have issues up in the OR when they're trying to insert it into access sheets, all right? So just be mindful of that. Um, once it's been wiped down, then we're going to start using our cleaning brushes, our different accessories. The first one that we use is our flat cleaning brush, the soft bristled brush. This is meant for the handle of the scope, so the silver section right here, particularly the hard to get spots underneath the deflection lever around the channels. All right? You want to use that until there's no longer any debris visible, which there probably shouldn't be in the first place. All right? The next accessory we're going to use is the short cleaning brush here. All right? And this is meant for the insides of the channel. So again, while it's submerged, we're going to insert it into the working channel, rotate it 360 degrees, take it out, rub any debris that's on there off, insert it again, continue that process for a total of three times. So we're going to insert it in three times, rotate 360 three times. We're going to do the same thing to the irrigation channel. All right? That's it for the short brush. Next is the long cleaning brush. Um, it's the same uh, working channel size as your fiber scopes, 3.6 French. So you're going to use the same brushes and you're going to follow the same process. You're going to insert it into the working channel, push it little by little until it comes out the distal end. Very important when you're using the long cleaning brush, you want to make sure that the angle cover is in the straight neutral position when you're passing that brush through. All right? You don't want it to be all curved up. Just think about it. When you're forcing that brush around the curb, it's going to scrape up against the inside of that working channel and cause potential damage. All right? So we always want to make sure that it's straight when we're passing that brush through. All right? So when you pass the brush through, it comes out the distal end. We're going to rub off the bristles to remove any debris, and then we're going to pull it back up through. All right? That was one brush, brush pass. We're going to do that for a total of three times. After that third time, if there's still debris visible, when we pull it back through, we're going to continue until there's no longer any debris. All right? The last step that you're going to do is, again, hook it up to your automated pump. Um, hook it up to the working channel. This time we're going to suction 50 ml of cleaning solution and flush it back through. We're going to move over to the irrigation, suction 50 ml and flush it right back through. All right? At that point, you're done with the manual cleaning and the enzymatic cleaning solution. We're going to leave it in there for the manufacturer's recommended period of time, which is usually like a minute or two. All right? Once you're done with that, we're going to take the scope out of the cleaning solution. Um, we're going to talk to Nelson about this next step, because what we recommend is holding it over the cleaning solution and flushing air through that channel to try to get as much of that cleaning solution out of there. We know you guys don't have syringes, and the automated pump that flushes air isn't filtered. So I think it's more than 5 PSI. We don't recommend anything more than 5 PSI. It's such a small working channel. If you get too much pressure in there, it can cause damage to that working channel. So we'll figure that out. But once we're done with the cleaning solution, we're now going to rinse it in just water, all right? So we're going to fill up a basin or sink with water, enough where we can fully submerge the scope. We're going to take a soft lint free cloth, gauze, and wipe down the complete exterior of the scope. We're going to hook up our automated pump to the working channel, suction 50 mLs of water, flush it back through, hook it up to the irrigation, suck, suction 50 mLs of water, and flush it back through, all right? We're going to take it out of the water, and again, our recommendation is to flush air through to get as much of that water out of there as possible. We'll work on that. That was one rinse. The recommendation is two rinses with new water each time, just like the fiber scopes you've been using. All right? So after that second rinse, we're going to dry our scope. You can uh, hand dry it with a towel. Um, again, filtered compressed air gun is okay as long as it's um, 5 PSI or lower. In terms of the channel, you can flush alcohol through the channel. That's the only place you ever want to use alcohol in the scope. You never want to use it on the exterior of the scope. All right, you can dry out the shaft. You don't want that. So if you're going to use alcohol, it's only for flushing through to dry out that inside channel. All right. In terms of inspection, again, there's no eyepiece, so we're not looking through the scope. The only thing you want to inspect is the deflection lever here. You want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. That's not uh, grainy or rough when you're pushing it. Then you want to make sure that it's deflecting 270 degrees both ways. All right. Next we're going to prepare for sterilization. Again, most importantly, we want to make sure that the shaft is supported inside of this container. All right, so that's in the inserts. We're processing this in the Sterad machine, so we need to make sure that we have this gas cap on. 
all right? Very important. If it's processed without this, the scope can potentially blow and fail leak tests, and that's a $10,000 mistake. So something to be very mindful of, all right? Um, there's separate filters for these trays, the Carl Storage trays. Um, the Astrolope ones are not validated for use with them, so there's going to be separate ones. We're going to have these seal locks for the sides, and there's indicators that slide in right here. All right. Anyone have any questions about any of these steps? I know it's a lot. We're going to get a checklist in decontam, so there's a step-by-step -step process. But like I said, it's literally step-by-step -step the same as the ureter scopes that you're used to. You're still going to have at least two um, of the fiber scopes left in service just in case of any emergencies upstairs in the OR, but you're going to end up seeing these a lot more. There's going to be six of them, and they're going to be using them a lot most likely. All right. Any questions? Well, thank you for your time.